Hi once again. So a discussion on nuclear physics is not complete without talking about the nature of the strong nuclear force. So the strong nuclear force is one out of the four fundamental forces that exist in the universe. The others being the gravitational force, the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force. So as the name suggests, the strong nuclear force is the strongest among them all. However, it works only at extremely short distances. It works at distances of around few femtometers. So a femtometer is around 10 to the power minus 15 meters. The strong nuclear force acts between neutrons and protons together to create stable nuclear structure. It also acts within a neutron or within a proton because neutrons and protons are not fundamental particles. They are made up of other fundamental particles. I'll come back to this point a moment later. What I want to distinguish is that when this force is acting within the dimension of a neutron or a proton, it is known as the strong nuclear force. But when it is acting outside the domain of a neutron, or a proton to create stable nuclear structures it is known as mostly nuclear force or sometimes a residual nuclear force why it is named as so I'll come back to this point just a moment later first I want to give an idea about the magnitude of this kind of a nuclear force and how it varies with distance to do that let's take the example of two protons so the nuclear force can act between two protons it can also act between two neutrons and it can also act between neutrons and protons if you take two protons and bring them close to each other up to a distance of around one femtometers, then you can calculate the force of repulsion that exists between these two protons because of coulombic repulsion. If you make that calculation, you will find that the coulombic force of repulsion that exists between these two protons will be around 230 newtons, which is huge because you're talking about subatomic particles. Two protons, just two protons, they experience a force of around 230 newtons at a distance of around one femtometers. So if they experience such a huge amount of force, which is trying to break these two protons apart, how is it that so many protons can exist in stable nuclear configurations? The answer is because of the nuclear force. The nuclear force is even much, much more powerful than this kind of a coulombic repulsion. If you look at how the nuclear force varies with distance, uh, you will find that at a distance of around one femtometers the force existing between two protons or a neutron and a, and a proton is of the order of around 25,000 newtons which is a huge number it is extremely powerful at a distance of around one femtometer however the nature with which strong nuclear force varies with distance is not very simple it is quite complicated as you can see from this kind of a diagram from distances of around one femtometer to 2.5 femtometers this force decreases exponentially here in this graph negative scale simply represents an attractive force and positive values of the force simply rep represents repulsive force so this force is attractive at its maximum maximum around a distance of around 1 femtometers and beyond that it decreases exponentially. Beyond 2.5 to 3 femtometers this force becomes negligible and particles do not usually experience a strong force beyond this distance. What is interesting is that for distances less than 1 femtometer this force suddenly decreases and flips its sign around 0.8 femtometers. So for a distance of less than 0.8 femtometers this force suddenly becomes repulsive in nature. Which is interesting because otherwise the neutrons and protons which are experiencing such a heavy attractive force will collapse onto itself. What is preventing the neutrons and protons to collapse onto itself? The strong nuclear force itself because the nature of the strong nuclear force is somewhat like that of a spring system. So if you pull a spring apart, it becomes attractive and it times tries to come back together. But if you push the spring beyond its equilibrium position, suddenly it becomes repulsive and it pushes the both ends away from each other. So the nuclear force is somewhat similar. For less than distances of around 0.8 femtometers, the nuclear force is a repulsive nature but from around distance of 1 to 2.5 femtometers the nuclear force is attractive. This is what creates the attractive force necessary to hold large number of neutrons and protons together to form a stable nuclear structure. Now what is the mechanism that leads to this kind of a complex nature of a nuclear force? One of the first successful theories was given by a Japanese scientist in 1935 by the name of Hideki Yukawa. 
It is also known as the Yukawa's theory of nuclear forces or the meson theory of nuclear forces. What he said is that the nuclear force which acts between neutrons and protons to hold the nucleus together is the result of a mechanism of continuous exchange of smaller particles between both these neutrons and protons. This is also known as the exchange of particle theory. What happens is that neutrons and protons are continuously emitting and absorbing certain kinds of particles known as pions and this kind of an exchange of pions between neutrons and protons is leading to what is the attractive force known as the nuclear force. To understand the exchange of particle theory, let's look at a very simple example. Let's imagine that there are two persons who are playing with a ball. They are playing catch-catch. So let's suppose you have Harry and John. Let's just name these two people. You have Harry and John and Harry has a ball. He throws the ball to John. John catches the ball and John again throws the ball back at Harry. Harry catches the ball, he throws it back again to John. John catches the ball, he throws it back again to Harry. And let's suppose that Harry and John are both determined not to drop the ball. What is going to happen? They are going to continuously keep on exchanging the ball over and over again. They might come close, they might go a little bit far apart, but they will always be stuck together. They will never go too far away because otherwise one of them has to drop the ball. They won't even be able to come too close. Otherwise, they won't be able to play catch-catch. So they will always be stuck together. So if Harry and John are continuously exchanging a ball or playing catch-catch, then what is going to be happen if somebody from far away looks at Harry and John? If somebody from far away is looking at Harry and John and he might not see that they are playing catch-catch, but he might be able to deduce then Harry and John are somehow continuously stuck together. There is an attractive force that is holding Harry and John. It is the same thing that happens between neutrons and protons inside a nucleus. Neutrons and protons are continuously emitting and absorbing a class of particles known as pions or pi mesons. And it is the exchange of these pi mesons that continuously happens between neutrons and protons that leads to the effect of a force which is known as the nuclear force. Today, in modern physics, we have what is known as the standard model of physics, which basically explains almost all forces via this kind of a exchange of particle theory, that forces are a result of exchange of particles between two different systems. Now let's come back to the point I made in the beginning between strong nuclear interaction and residual nuclear interaction. As I already said, neutrons and protons are not fundamental elementary particles. In fact, they are made up of further fundamental elementary particles which are known as quarks. I will not go into details about quarks. What you just need to know is that there are different kinds of quarks. Out of them, some of them are known as up quark and down quark. A proton is made up of two up quarks and one down quark. And a neutron is made up of one up quark and two down quarks. These quarks are held together to create a proton or to create a neutron by the strong nuclear interaction. Even the quarks are experiencing exchange of particles within them to create the effect of the strong nuclear interaction and the exchange particle involved between quarks is known as gluons. So the quarks are continuously exchanging what is known as gluons that result in the creation of an effect of force called the strong nuclear interaction which is creating a stable neutron structure and a stable new proton structure. Now the uh, strong nuclear interaction not only is confined within the domains of the neutron and the proton but they somehow seep outside the domains of the neutrons and protons. So when two neutrons and two protons come close together this kind of a strong interaction which is actually happening inside the quarks somehow has a residual effect outside the boundaries of the neutrons and protons. So this residual effect that happens between one collection of quarks that is a neutron and another collection of quarks that is a proton, this residual effect is what is known as the nuclear force. It is this residual effect that leads to stable nuclear structures while the strong force leads to stable neutron and proton structures. So as you can see, the nuclear force is not a very simple force. It is quite complicated and there is no mathematical function to precisely define the magnitude of this force at a given distance. The exchange of gluons lead to stable neutron and proton configurations and the exchange of pions between these neutrons and protons lead to stable nuclear configurations. That is all for today's discussion. I'll see you in the next video.